Hello everyone, Pahamar here with episode 12 of Let's Mod Reboot. In today's episode, we are going to talk about named binary tags. So last episode, I introduced you to the concept of an item stack being an instance of an item or an item block, which represents a block. Um, and that I also explained that there was multiple parts that make up an item stack, namely that an item stack contains an item. Uh, it has metadata or damage value. They, uh, the two uh, concepts are equivalent, as well as it has this concept of a uh, piece of named binary tag data. So what is named binary tag data? NBT data is a concept in terms of um, storing extra data on items. Uh, it exists because different items may want to store different kinds of uh, extra data. So metadata is kind of considered a, uh, a universal across items. Um, but the maximum value of that uh, is only 16. Uh, so you have the, uh, the possibility of doing 0 through 15. Um, when it comes to durability, it's, it's a little bit different. But anyway, roughly, it's not a lot of space to save data on it. Um, NBT data gives you the ability to save as much data as you want, but on a particular item stack. So we went over before and we talked about the idea of a book having named binary tag data. And it may have things in it like uh, the enchantment, the level of enchantment, uh, and that'll also be saved on, say, if you take that enchantment and you apply it to a tool. Now the tool has that enchantment on it, but it also has its own durability. When it comes to modding, NBT data is extremely powerful because it allows you to say um, this sword, its owner is Pahamar, uh, or this block was made by Direwolf20, or this bee is of this genetic type and breed, and this purity. You can save all kinds of data to it, but it's very important to understand how to do that. So. Why don't I show you, uh, now let's talk about it a bit first, or some more, while I bring this up. So, there we go. All NBT data starts of type NBT base. So this is a background. You don't need to worry about all the details for this yet. So, NBT base allows you to save various different types of data. Namely, you can save bytes, shorts, ints, longs, floats, doubles, byte arrays, strings, a list of other tags, other tag types, MBT base types, a compound, so uh, a more complex structure of these various different things, and an int array. A item stack stores all of its MBT data in a compound. So what a compound is, is uh, it's an abstract structure that allows you to save all kinds of other tags inside of it. Um, these are called NBT data, named binary tags, because each of these has a tag that represents the name, and then it has a value associated to that tag. So it's a mapping of a tag to a value. So what does that mean for us? That means that we can save different pieces of data on an object, and this is going to on an item stack. Very specific, it has to be an item stack. Um, in more advanced cases, we'll talk about things like fluid stacks and stuff. It allows you to save um, very particular data on, uh, on an object. So when you have an item stack, it doesn't necessarily start with its compound initialized. And what I mean by that, so let's bring up item stack. So you can see here, oh, the other part, I should have mentioned this in the previous video, is the size of the stack. Uh, hopefully that's fairly straightforward. So here you can see the NBT, NBT tag compound that an item stack has. Um, this is kind of the parent container that holds all your other specialized information inside of it. Um, information is saved inside of NBT data with uh, the write to NBT method, which takes the compound and it writes in the data. So here you can see it writes in the ID of the object. So this is the um, item. Uh, 
the stack size, the metadata, the item damage, and then it writes in the uh, tag compound. And when it's read out from disk, when the game starts up again, or player logs in, it's read with this read from NBT. And I want to correct something I just said a moment ago. Um, NBT data also will apply to tile entities. Um, we'll get to that in later episodes. Roughly, tile entities act as instances of blocks where you want to save other data and do special things. Uh, so tile entities are to blocks what uh, item stacks are to items. So we have our parent tag compound, but when it's created, when an item stack is created, rather, that tag compound is not always initialized. Um, but once it is initialized, you can save other data inside of it. So I want to show you something I have in Equivalent Exchange 3 that I think you're all going to find very helpful. Um, we have helper classes for a reason. So I'll show you my NBT helper class. So what this class has in it is it will give you all kinds of getters and setters for various different um, types of data. And by that I mean um, here's a getter and setter combo for saving and getting a short value from the NBT data of an item stack. Um, similarly, here we have for long, uh, here we have it for int and integer, uh, doubles, strings in here somewhere, there's string. All of these methods you will notice actually call this init NBT tag compound. This method right here is a private one and what it does is it makes sure that if the item stack you were dealing with doesn't have its tag compound initialized, it does initialize it. So what this allows you to do is in your code at any time, and here let's see an example. I can just call, here's an item stack, I can just say hey set this long value. Here's the item stack, here's the named tag, here's the value I want you to save. So see here, here's the item stack, here's the tag name, here's the value. If the item uh, item stacks tag compound isn't initialized, it initializes it, and then it saves it. So it's really powerful uh, this utility class here, in terms of just quickly dealing with um, uh, whatever data you want to save on your item stack. It also has uh, a couple other helper methods in here. It has a method here that will uh, tell you if that item stack happens to contain a uh, a tag. Uh, in its tag compound, given the name, uh, as well as it will allow you to uh, remove a tag from the name. So what I'm going to do is I will uh, upload this class into the Let's Mod Reboot uh, repository so that you guys all have access to it as well, or you could grab it from the uh, uh, the Equivalent Exchange 3 repo. Uh, I'll make sure to scrub out any uh, Equivalent Exchange 3 related stuff in here. But it's a very, I find it a, to be a very helpful class um, when manipulating item stacks because, like I said, early on uh, I struggled with uh, item stacks and MBT data. I can't really give you um, great examples uh, showing you code and everything other than uh, just like looking through here and saying, okay, well, here's a string, you know, who uses this method? Okay, well, I have an item helper here that returns the owner string. Uh, so the person who made it, it will return who uh, who the item belongs to. Uh, that's what this guy does here. So it says, okay, for an item stack, does it have the owner tag? If it does, give me the value of it. Uh, and I use that inside of a, a tooltip helper, a tool tip, tool tip event handler uh, to actually render. So when you mouse over an item, it'll actually show you that uh, piece of data. So. Like I said, I'll commit this to the repository. Hopefully, this very basic uh, explanation of uh, MPT data um, was helpful. Um, one thing of note, uh, tag compounds can contain other tagged compounds. So what that means is you, it, you could have a whole whack of data on an object. Um, it's not recommended you have too much in it because it uh, NBT data is not necessarily the most efficient in terms of getting and receiving, um, but it is there for a reason and it is still very powerful. So 
hopefully uh, this helps uh, get you introduced to NBT data. I think later on the course we'll actually see uh, some more concrete examples of this. Um, but for now, uh, I think it's a good wrapping up point. We'll pick it up again next time in episode 13 when we talk about the OR dictionary. Uh, but for now, once again, comments, bugs, problems, uh, put them in the comments in YouTube or let me know on Twitter or IRC. Uh, please, if you're going to do that, uh, use a, uh, a text linking site like Pastebin or the GIST system on uh, GitHub. Um, it really helps formatting that kind of stuff because if you just paste in a giant crash log into YouTube, it's almost unreadable. So please do that if you're going to uh, submit a crash log or something. So until then, this is Pahmar signing off. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again and take it easy.